Hello and welcome to Outside Xbox. You're watching Show of the Week. I'm Andy. And I'm Mike. What's wrong with the sofa? Oh, it's uh, brand new. What? Yeah, you remember we had to refit the entire studio after Jane wrecked up the place last week? Oh, the destruction. Right. So much. That's a real shame. It had the perfect indentation for my butt shape. What? What? Oh, it feels weird. Can we not at least have got a new sofa with cup holders? No, for the last time, that's what we had Luke for. I haven't been this uncomfortable since we played the Blair Witch game. <laughs> There's a Blair Witch game? <laughs> oh, shit. You remember when you were playing that Nokia Snake game, right? Yeah, yeah. The experience that bookended that game was the Blair Witch game. Oh, right. I did think it was a weirdly expansive kind of fictional layer for a re-release of Snake. Right. Like, I was like, why am I playing Snake in the woods? Oh, oh, good. Excellent snaking, thanks. Okay, Blair Witch, so like the movie. Yes, exactly like the movie, including the house from the movie, uh, which I read has been destroyed now. They, they, there was like a campaign to save it in real life. Okay. The was real it life. Like house. A set that they just built. No, no, no. It was an actual house in the forest. There was a campaign. They were going to demolish it. There was a campaign to save it, and then they secretly demolished it later anyway. Okay. So that's a bit of Blair Witch trivia for you. <laughs> All right. uh, but yeah, you end up at the house. We did that bit. Um, there's the forest and the idea of it kind of. Obviously, one of the central premises of the film is like getting turned around, not really being sure where you are. Yeah, but those kids are idiots, though. <laughs> There's a bit where they walk across a river and keep going instead of following the river. That's survival rule number one. Follow a river. Yeah, it'll lead you to the sea or a city or something. Right, OK. I'm sure, cool. I, I'm sure I remember that from, <laughs> from Scouts. Boy Scouts, yeah. yeah um, exactly. Anyway, so there's a lot of that in kind of you, can check, you can check a tree to see which side the moss is growing on. Right. And it'll tell you which side is north. I see. Well, there you go. These Look are for Polaris. Su survival tips from Andy. Suck the marrow out of a, a bone that you find or have something. You, have you been watching Bear Grylls again? <laughs> yes. Is that it? Right. You know okay. I have. Yeah, of course. Okay. So, uh, drink your own bits urine. in the <laughs> Never drink your own urine. Just There's say. no need. Brad Pitt told me it's sterile in Fight Club. Yeah, I mean, it is sterile, but it doesn't make it good. <laughs> Just saying. Right, we've got enough topics. <laughs> yeah, please continue. The Blair Witch game is made by the people who made Layers of Fear. Obviously, yeah. one of who the are central called themes. Blueber team, Blueber team, which is yeah. the. Sorry, Blueber team, if you're watching. You are very good developers. I just think it's not a very scary name. No. It sounds like you should be making children's games about a sort of funny dinosaur. Okay. I mean, maybe they, maybe that's how they started, and then they were like, actually, we've accidentally made the dinosaur horrifying. Ooh, Let's Blueber do horror team. games. Yeah, it should, should be called. Blood Nightmare. Blood Nightmare. Yeah. There you go. Just change the name, Blue Team. All right. You know it makes sense. Come on, work. Anyway, you were making a very trenchant point about mm. Blair Witch, and I keep interrupting you. So the point is, uh, mm. Layers of Fear did a lot of that thing where you were kind of confused and turned around, and the environment changed, and you're never quite sure where you were. It's really difficult to get a grasp of the shape of the area that you were in. Mm -hmm. And that's like fundamental to the Blair Witch mythos, and that is, again, a feature of this game. Yes, and it, it is very disorienting, and yeah. the sort of the main feeling I had throughout the 40 minutes that we played the game was just dread, just constant stress yeah. and dread, which is, you know, it's not for everyone to no. feel constantly stressed and dreadful. Mm. But um, yeah, as a, as a horror experience, it was surprisingly effective. Yeah. Um, it was sort of tempered slightly by the fact that you have a dog, Yeah. which was cool, um, called Bullet. Okay, Bullet, let's find this kid. It does make it, it's more reassuring having a dog running around with you. Yeah, but when the dog starts to like freak out <laughs> and you can't see anything, that is a bit unsettling. Yes, I suppose, yes. Where's the boy? There's some quite unusual mechanics in there that I wasn't really expecting from yeah. a Blair Witch game. Like the, the thing with the videotapes. Yeah, which again is like a really nice, obviously the first film was a lot about kind of found footage and really sort of set out the found footage thing. But yeah, the idea that when you pick up the red tapes, you can actually fast forward and rewind in time. Uh, so we used it to get through a gate because 
we watched the video and a guy burst through the gate and when we came back outside, the dog was barking at the gate because it was now open. Which is like fun and interesting and I, I don't know how much they'll use it within the game, but it was a really nice yeah. little mechanic. Kind of like Braid. Almost. Yeah. That kind like of time Braid. based puzzle thing. But um, yeah, for me, the standout feature was that you can play Snake on your phone. Yeah. I mean, it was good. Yeah, I really wasn't expecting that because they give you this old Nokia phone because it said, what, 1994, mm. 1996? I think. Yeah. yeah. And um, I was like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if you can play Snake on it? Oh my god, you can actually yeah. play Snake on it. This is. Uh, this is and then we played Snake on it for a decent amount of time, actually. I think if you've seen the Let's Play that we did. Get the dot. I'm going to do it. Get the dot with your line of dots. Yes, your you line think? of dots has gotten longer. <laughs> Sorry, Blair Witch. I'm a little <laughs> preoccupied right now. Um, yeah, I, I'm excited for it. I, I guess Devil's Advocate, like, Layers of Fear, we played a fair amount of that. There was only really one major scare in that that I can remember, which was the famous book monster. Taking another clip. And. There's a hand coming out of it. Uh. Ah, the monster! <laughs> yeah. But aside from that, there was a lot of atmosphere building, a lot of creepiness, a lot of that sense of dread, but yeah. not a lot of kind of like payoff. Whereas when we played Slender the Arrival, a lot of tension and also a occasionally slender. get slendered. He was slending around the whole time. Exactly. He'd be in the church or in the house or whatever. Charlie's family. Charlie's ancestors. Ah! <laughs> Jesus! Ah, the door! But yeah, the bit in the house though with um, the creepy... Was that... I don't even know if that was the Blair Witch. We were referring sort of... to it as the Blair Witch because we will refer to literally anything that attacks you in the game as the Blair Witch. I don't uh, think it was the Blair Witch. I think it was... Apparently, like, it was some sort of A Blair creature. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you were attacked by a sort of shadowy monster as well that reacted to the uh, light. I'm so bad at seeing things. <laughs> Get yeah. off. It's like a ghost back. There it is. Left, 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 left. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh got, got me. You. I, I, you were like, it's there, it's there. And I'm like, what is what? It is <laughs> difficult. I went back, obviously, I edited the Let's Play and yeah. like, uh, went back through the footage. It is difficult to spot. But I also think, like, when you're playing a game like that, and particularly like a horror game and it's dark and things like that, it's the same with Slender, I think. It's sort of, when you're playing it, you're kind of focused on the kind of tunnel vision center mm. of the screen. But when you're not playing it, you're kind of almost sitting back a bit. You can more take in the entire screen and see stuff that is kind of in the corners. If you look at the comments of one of our horror Let's Plays, a lot of people would be like, are you blind? You missed this at yeah, yeah. time code or this at time code. And it's like, yeah, when you're watching the whole thing, detached and not controlling it, you yeah. are free to scan the entire frame. But when you're playing, you're very yeah, specifically like focused, focused on, the, on uh, certain parts. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. It is easy to miss that stuff. What was that thing? Come on, buddy. We had the same thing with Outlast 2 as well. Do you remember, like, people were like, oh, there's a spooky thing in the room. We were just like, the pair of us totally missed it. So. Yeah, when I was playing Man and Madan with Luke, there was um, a bit where he's like, oh, that creepy hand. And I was like, I what? didn't see it. <laughs> 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 ah, 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 ah. What was that? Spooky what was hand. It? Did you not see the spooky hand? No, I was looking at the character. Andy, there was a spooky this is, hand. This is how I get around horror games. I just you just don't, don't look, look at them. Look at things. So that's that's quite a good way of avoiding scares, really. Yeah. It's just being utterly just, oblivious. Maybe if you thing. just like really press your face up against the the crosshair right in the middle of the screen, you can never be scared. No, that's how they get you with those screamer videos, though. It's like that's something true. you can't see, so you get closer and closer. And then it goes, yeah. yeah. Like a lizard jumps out. Blair Witch. Or a Blair Witch. It's not going to be a super long game, as I understand. I think it. six to eight hours. So, yeah. But it's not. It's not full price as well. It's like okay. a slightly cheaper. Um, and it, like all of Blue Team's like horror games, it looks really good. Like it's a really pretty looking game. Yeah, and there's going to be some. Um, different endings depending on what you do yeah. in the game and how you treat the dog specifically. Yeah. So be nice to your dog yeah. or else you might get Blair Witch. Oh, unless the twist is that you've got to be really mean to a dog because <gasps> the dog is the Blair Witch. The dog was the Blair Witch all along. And then at the end you're like, well, Bullet, we finally made it. And you turn around and Bullet's like, ah! And then you, you're like, oh no. And then you realize you're standing in a corner. Yeah. And then you realize you're in Blair Witch 2, Book of Shadows. And oh, Queens the of worst the Stone fate Age. of all. Queens of the Stone Age starts playing. <laughs> is that what happened in the credits? 
Have, it's, have you not seen Blair Witch 2? I had When I saw it like 100 years ago. The opening scene is set to Feel Good Hit of the Summer by Queens of the Stone Is it? Age. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. they're, they're all, it's very literal. It's so they're on the nose. They're all, they're all so off to take drugs goodness. in the woods or something. <laughs> I, I can't remember. But um, yeah, so it should be a, a, a compact little horror experience to play. Uh, I don't know why it's coming out now, not in October. Yeah, right. Why, like maybe October. just sit on it until Halloween, but... I'll take a I'll take a new horror game anytime. So yeah, but um, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing it, and also I think we should um, play it as part of our Hello Stream yeah. celebration. So be good let's let's save some of it for Hello Stream. So Jane is where exactly? Well, after she destroyed the studio, we decided she should take some time out to think about what she's done. Okay. About how she can make it up to us. I see. Which is why she's in the time out pit, eating toast and watching Queer Eye instead of here, reading YouTube comments. Indeed. Yeah, I see what she's done there. Well, Mike, what I have been up to this week is I've played some Borderlands 3. Borderlands, is it? Another yeah. one? There is, yeah, there's a Did third one. Did they not one. hear me? Talking about how I hate numbers coming out of people's heads and they should probably just stop. So that was a clip from last week's show of the week, which was about Borderlands 3. It certainly was. Mike, which uh, I think we established. You are mildly ambi- well, that's the, yeah, that's the emoji re review. It'll probably be fine. <laughs> It'll probably be fine. Put that on the box. Says Mike. <laughs> Don't put that on the box. <laughs> I but, don't think um, there's any danger of them putting that on the box. Yeah, I think uh, we, we have a clip of you being mildly ambivalent. A big part of the game is the loot that you get that make the numbers bigger. Right, but what if I don't care about loot? So people were quite surprised <laughs> there. They thought this would be more your sort of game. Like right. Riley, Riley Games, who says, It blows my mind Mike doesn't like Borderlands. It's chaos, aliens, and memorable characters. My three favourite things. Yeah, uh, yeah I, like, I think I said in the, in the show, like, my... In theory, like, it's absolutely up my street, but, um... I just find the the thing where you're firing a gun and your gun is too weak so it doesn't really do anything against the bad guy and lots of very, very small numbers come out. I just find that a bit wearing, basically. So you're literally swap gun for sword and you're literally describing Dark Souls. No, that's a game that you love. No, but that's not quite the same because that's like a giant, like, horrifying monster. With numbers still, coming out of it. And it's still satisfying to hit those things, whereas I don't know, just something about Borderlands just doesn't... Like, I, I, Destiny works pretty much the same way as, as Borderlands, but I find the shooting in Destiny more satisfying. But Borderlands has a sense of humour. It does, and Destiny absolutely does not yeah. have a sense of humour. Um, other than like them thinking that the Vault of Glass was an acceptable thing for me to try and play. Um, that's kind of that's funny, I suppose. Funny, yeah. Um, but yeah, Borderlands, I, like, I, I'll, I'll have another crack at it, based entirely on the fact that it should be absolutely my jam. But I, I feel like I might not stick with it. Like, I didn't as, stick with all the other you ones. You can play as Flak, they're a robot with pets. Yeah, I, the pets people. do look great. The pets do look great. Alright, okay, I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go for you guys. Um, but it, it, I may not end up finishing it. And voiced by Pro ZD, the right, the yeah, who does the funny skits? Yeah. So, so wh you know. what's not to like? All right, fine. Next comment. Okay, Jackie Four says, if you're looking for merch ideas, I would like to ask for stuffed animals (brackets plushies) of your D&D characters. I mean, I would like those things as well. Yeah, didn't someone gave us? Do we have any of those? I'm going to go and look right now. Mike, uh, entertain everyone while I'm away, briefly. Do some, do a monologue or something. Is this working? Right. I can't find them because we were made to tidy up the studio recently. And they they're will exist somewhere. But they're, somewhere. they're amazing. Someone made us, there's a picture. I'll put it up on screen now. Mm -hmm. Someone made us plushies. Yes. Some of our characters and they were great. And yeah. I think that we should also do that. I think that would be great. It sounds like complicated and, and, and expensive to do, but that doesn't mean we won't necessarily do it. It just might take a while. Yeah. I guess that's fair to say. Yeah. So not ruling it out. No, but there is new merch coming soon. Secrets. Yeah. Secret merch. Yeah. New um, secret and if you have any cool ideas for t-shirts, do keep putting them in the comments. We're considering all the ideas. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, so let us know. Pierre Gasly! It's an appropriate name for a man like you, because you are ghastly <laughs> at racing cars. That's Ouch. right, friend. <laughs> oh, you think you can just come into my yard and race cars well? Well, let me tell you something, friend. Ain't nobody race cars around here like the god of driving! Oh, old Gasly. 
He's rapidly well, becoming like the, the yeah. fourth member of the presenting team. Yeah. Um, he's been on pretty much every show of the week since he was on the channel. <laughs> yeah, true. Fine by me. But talk yeah. about Pierre Gasly more than we talk about. Pretty much Aaron. anyone, yeah. Yeah. Someone asked me the other day if James still worked with us. He does, he's there. Hey, James so, is there. Hey, James. Um, oh. um, yes, Pierre Gasly. Yeah. Should I cut another promo? <laughs> he's had enough. He's had enough bad news this week. <laughs> All right, fine. Um, Dapper Hora says, oh, Pierre Gasly has been demoted. How will he become Pierre Gengar now? That's a Pokemon joke, isn't it? It is, yeah, because Gasly evolves into right. Gengar. And then what I, feel, I should probably, I feel contractually obliged to boo that. So boo. Okay, good. But, um, That's probably what they want. You're probably just encouraging them. Yeah. He's, well, he's been demoted, so I don't think there's an earlier evolution. of. Right. Gasly. What was the ultimate evolution of what, what comes after Gengar? Because there's three normally, so, isn't Yeah, it? Gasly, Gengar, uh, Satan. Satan? Yeah, he's a ghost. Like there you go. That's, all ghosts become Satan. Sure. Uh, but yeah, so um, best wishes to Pierre Gasly. Yeah. Um, Chin up. <laughs> okay, ready? Home your briefcase, go. Yeah. yeah let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. There she is. Yeah. Oh, oh, the police. Oh, no. Right next to the police. Do you remember that, Mike, when we knocked out all those people with a homing briefcase? Yes. I'm not sure if they'd remember it because of the whole head injury thing. Well, yeah, yes. and in the top level of the escalation, you drowned them all in a creek. Oh, yeah, I did do that as well, yeah. So, so definitely not. I um, remember much. That was that. fun. We have some comments such as this from Dribblondo, who says, fun fact, the higher your frame rate, the slower the briefcase goes. Go on, no, 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 this one. Okay, step back. You got it. <laughs> oh no, the local politician. Amazing. The local get politician. Him get him as well. Oh. Oh, okay. That makes no sense to me whatsoever. Mm. Like if the animation was a series of frames, you'd have thought if the frame rate was higher, it would go more quickly. Go, no, because the f some, there'll be more frames inside the briefcase, which make the briefcase heavier, which means it moves slower. Right. as it flies through the air. So that's how video games work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, most of the frames will end up inside the briefcase. You don't want them on screen. No. They'll course. be obvious. You'll Keep see them. Using. Yeah, so you 47 probably packed them all and in the briefcase. And then it moves slowly. And then it was heavy, and he was like, Ugh! and it's like, oh, God, I'm going to lift all these frames as it goes around. Makes perfect sense. So, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, any game designers who want to agree with me, get in touch. <laughs> uh, Dally Daydream comments, in which the escalation becomes that little bit more tricky because of the house rule. If they are running, they get briefcased because Mike spent hours unlocking this weapon and it's funny. Okay. Wait for, yeah, is she gonna, no, wait. Okay, we're there time. I really did spend quite a long time How unlocking How did you even one. unlock the briefcase? Didn't you have to do some stealth-based challenges? Yes, yeah, which is well, not, how did you do not that, really my even? forte. Um, well, actually, fortunately, a couple of them are less stealthy than they seem. So, the, you know the one where you had to get the briefcase out of the morgue to the um, oh, to yeah. the crypt. Yeah, yeah. You can actually do that just by sprinting through and shooting everyone. Oh, okay. Uh, while wearing the awful outfit. Oh, that's straightforward. Um, so that was fairly straightforward. I unlocked the sniper rifle by doing the Marrakesh escalation, the one that we did ages ago, that was really difficult. Oh, the one we had to hang off a building for hours. Yeah, yeah, all sorts of awful stuff, and you're not allowed to be spotted at all in the final bit. Yeah. Um, so I got that sniper rifle, and then it was just a case of getting up to the top of the tower. Uh, we had the wrong tower when we were uh, we were talking about doing the wrong tower anyway. Oh, um, right. When we were doing the stream, it's the other tower. Okay. Did that, it's not a problem. So really bad live stream was just doomed from the start. Yeah, but there was cake, so it's fine. There was cake. Um, and then the one with the guys, you have to, uh, there's a fuse box on the side, you can use that to get one of the guys out, you go and kill the other guy with the briefcase toss his body through the window into the water uh, so you can eliminate them through that. You don't have to do it on the jetty. Very nice. Uh, and then you just keep making noises. And it's really difficult because there's no cover within that um, yeah. uh, little hut. And if you get spotted, you immediately fail. So it's quite complicated, but yeah, it's doable. All right, well, well done. Thanks. So, all right, let's try, let's try again. All right, get that rake down. Drop down. it. Yeah. Rake is down. Oh, no, it broke. broke. Oh, what? What? What is with those rakes? Yeah, I know. Like, they're just made of sawdust. Like, what do they think rakes are? I don't know, but that would not that would not survive a a good hour of yard work. Oh, a minute of yard work. Yeah, or like just, being picked up at all. Yeah, it's like it's Weird. like Thanos snapped his fingers and fifty percent of all rakes <laughs> on the planet just, just disintegrated. Shattered. Yeah. Well, Tom Cheney says 47's grip is so crushingly strong that the rake is mostly sawdust by the time it leaves his hand, only needing the little jolt of hitting the floor to overcome the friction holding it together. Right. So that's his So theory. what he's saying is that 47 has compressed it all to the point where it's becoming dust. 47 is, is like so furious that it's just full of like micro fractures. Right, and, and then like when it drops, anything, it just... Yeah, the structural integrity is so minor 
Sounds legit. Anything that happens will just shatter that rake. Sounds entirely legit. I've seen 47 hang off a building for ages, mainly because I've normally messed it up and every guard in the building is coming after me. It's um, hard, it's hard to hang. There was a, um, I was recently at the Calgary Stampede, uh, which is sort of like a county fair type deal. Cowboy show. Cowboy show thing. And one of the sideshow attractions they had was hang, hang off a bar for two minutes and you win a hundred dollars. You just had to hang there. For but two minutes is a long two time. Two minutes is a long time. Uh, I did, someone got it, I saw someone get it. Yeah. But 40, 47 wouldn't even, wouldn't even break mm. a sweat. He could probably do it one arms. Just hang there and be like, give me my hundred yeah. dollars. Just, <laughs> he, they, could, they could post it between his clenched buttocks. He wouldn't <laughs> even need to leave the bar to collect. Yeah. He'd spend it all on rakes though. <laughs> yeah, he would, yeah. Because he's broken so many. Uh, one last comment on this. Jeremy Ryan says, I did not expect the Sideshow Bob rake to work, but I'm really, really happy that it did. Oh boy. Oh boy, here we it's come. It's be fun. It can't work at this pace, surely. <laughs> Get ready, the folks. world's slowest prank. The prank's about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I am the prank master. Everybody uh, press like. Everybody press like. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 It worked! It worked! It worked! It hit her in the butt Yay. and she fell unconscious. I didn't expect it to work either because the Me rake either, was the yeah. wrong way up. Yes, yeah. <laughs> like, so she, it, 47 placed the rake sort of pointy bits down yeah. and somehow it it's still like, on an angle. did the spring, but only after the lady ran over it and then it hit her in the. came up, hit her in the back, back and it. back of the head. Which is not how the rake thing works, but okay. I think it's more likely to knock you out if it gets in the back of the head, though. Well, on the base of the skull. Yeah, there's just like a tissue thin layer of bone between right in the brain stem. <laughs> between you and all her memories. Right. <laughs> oh, God. Personality core. Oh, no. It's just right there in the medulla oblongata. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, physically it looked a bit weird, but I'm glad as a concept it works. Basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so those were this week's comments, Mike. Yeah. Good good crop of videos this week. Uh, new D&D went up on uh, oh, our yeah. channel this week, so if you haven't watched that yet, check that out. Some uh, some good stuff in there, some good Egbert lore. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you're interested in what the flip is going on with Egbert, yeah. like, you're going to find out a lot more about his whole deal. Can you give us an Egbert t tidbit for viewers of the show? Uh, a little bit of secret lore, maybe no one yeah, knows. Yeah, I think I may have mentioned this once before, but people don't know it, is that when I actually wrote the original character description, Egbert was missing a little finger uh, on one of his hands from an explosive mishap. And I'm not sure it's... Uh, like Harold Lloyd, the side of the movie star. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So that's in the character description. It's not really become plot relevant yet, but I maybe one not, day. You're not doing that for your costume and live shows. Oh, it's sawing my finger off. Yeah, I, I'm not in the prestige. You know, I'm not. I'm not going full commitment to the to the trick. I'm trying to get my costume to precisely match my character artwork. At the point when I can have a full animatronic Egbert suit that looks like you know the same sort of style as those old Ninja Turtles movies. Yeah, I'll absolutely do it. But until then, <laughs> it's a silly. It's that. a silly spray painted hat. And and the the robes. I'm gonna insist you like bind a finger yeah. for the next live show for verisimilitude. Right. Okay. All right. Swoosh. That's all the video that's fit to internet. Thanks for spending your precious time with the likes of us. Yes, but before you go back to your whole deal, could you do us a solid and hit that like button? Yeah. And if you've already hit the like button, why not hit that bell button to be notified every time we upload a video? Why not indeed? Thanks. Bye. So how's that new sofa working out for you? Yeah, I'm getting there. I feel like if I rock back and forth from buttock to buttock for about 16 to 18 hours, I'll probably create a new indentation that perfectly suits my butt shape. So are you like, are you like clenched at the moment or are you going no, like- No, no, to... like, you need to be a bit loose. You need to give yourself room to- You're to... trying to recreate standard conditions. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like everyone's it's, butt is unique. It's like a fingerprint, but on your butt. It's like a fingerprint, but a butt print. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I can see that, but also... I'm amazed they don't use it for security doors and things like that. <laughs> what, like, a, <laughs> like a scanner? Yeah. That you just... Everyone's I mean, butt's so individualistic. I, no two butts are the same. Would it work through clothes, or...? I don't, probably not. Okay, I'm see, I am seeing some flaws okay. in the plan. Well, are we talking hygiene? <laughs> I mean, for what? <laughs> No, actually, you know what? That's fine. Um, I thought so. All right, you work up <laughs> this butt-based security protocol, and I am going to go and do literally anything else. <laughs> okay. Mm.